Megan, how are you feeling ahead of the World Championships? It's been one of those years where it's taken so long to get to this point. So it started training last October. It's, we've got a year to go, we've got a year to go. It doesn't matter, it's fine, we've got ages. Um, you kind of started the summer, I uh, had the same feeling. So it's just kind of, I can't actually believe it's come round now because I've been saying it's ages away for so long. <laughs> Such a long, a long season as well. How have you managed it? Um, I quite enjoy having a long season. Last year I raced on the 10th, 11th of September anyway. Um, and then when I was a child, I did the um, combined events English girls and that was always this weekend. So I think I always found it normal going and competing in September. So I was just thinking, what's a few more weeks, we'll be fine. And then I did do the Commonwealth Games in 2010, which was October the 10th I raced. We're here, we're in Dubai at Holding Camp. What does a week like this involve for you? A lot of it is just about final preparation. So it's just getting that last bit of speed in, getting a lot of recovery in, just preparing for the championships. I had a big training block before I got here. So then to, now when you're in the heat, in the sun, you can come out here and I can finally practice my race with rhythm. It's really hard in hurdles in windy, cold conditions to get the right stride pattern in. And that's something that's really important for us. So to come into these conditions, especially here, there's a nice tailwind up the back straight. So it makes it easier for us to get to hurdle five. So um, can practice everything that I can't do back home. You mentioned the heat. How much experience have you got competing in conditions like these? Um, well, I raced in Doha in the Diamond League in May, and the the, um, the stadium is fantastic because it's kind of cool because the air conditioning element. So I have and haven't competed in those situations, but it was quite hot in Delhi and um, Beijing, my PB. I'm sure that day was 35 degrees. It was such a hot day when I ran my personal best. I think my muscles and joints appreciate this hot weather. I don't think I was born to be, be British sometimes because I'm always, always cold. You, you've obviously raced in Doha very recently. Tell me about the stadium, the city, and about that air conditioning and how that impacts the arena. I think it's just nice because you know what the conditions are going to be like in, in the stadium. So quite often we'll compete and athletes will look at the weather, we'll look at the wind, so we'll look at the, whether it's going to be hot, whether it's raining. So it's quite nice to kind of go into there and it's pretty much consistent conditions in there so you can kind of prep yourself for what you need to do. Um, so it's like when you run indoors, so you know what you're going to get. I, I think I'm just quite looking forward to it. Um, and I, I just, like I said, I love being in the heat, so I always just get excited for that. So this is your fourth World Championships coming up, three semi-finals. Tell me about how you reflect on each of those and, and how you feel going into this one. I can't believe, yeah, so my first World Championships, I came ninth. I was sort of 0 0.03 off that final. And I remember coming fifth in my race. I, was, I might have even been sixth, and I thought there was no way I would get, even get close. And then I was so tantalisingly close, and I was just dipped on the line. So the girl, actually, I was ahead of her until the final two footsteps. And I was so happy because I ran a PB, I went 54.9, first time under 55. And it was just fantastic. And I kind of was really excited. Then I realised how close I was to the final and I was just mortified. I was thinking, oh, I've lost the opportunity. You don't always get this. You don't know when it's going to happen again. I can't believe I've done it. So about two years later, brilliant. I ran a personal best in my heat, which was probably, I think it was in the top six times at the championships, but I didn't emulate my <laughs> heat performance in the semis. So I came 10th and didn't quite get to the final again. In London, I just wasn't myself, I'd had Achilles tear, plantar fascia tear, I wasn't running as fast as I wanted to. So I kind of learned that you just have to take what you can, so I've just got to go out there and perform. I love performing at the championships, I've got good, um, well two of the world champs I've done I did get a PB at, so you know, hopefully I'll keep on that kind of line and um, do some good performances I can be proud of. There have been a few ups and downs over the last couple of years, obviously European bronze last year, fantastic mm. achievement. And I also saw just after that you've gone part time as well in 2017. So, so tell me about sort of how the last few years, few years have gone and sort of how you feel at the same time. I think I've always worked to be fair, I've never not had a job. The only year I didn't have a job was 2016, and that was potentially the worst year of my life. Um, so I was very injured. Um, I, but I've always worked and trained alongside one another because I find that kind of helps. So it means I can be here. There's a lot of downtime, but I'll still be working. and. It's just something that I like to do. Um, so I'm just kind of enjoying it, kind of being self-funded almost because I can do my job, do my athletics. My group are very supportive and I just 
we feel happier about doing it like that. How would you gauge successful world championships? Kind of making each round um, count almost. So do do my stride pattern. Don't do any mess up. Don't don't um, have any issues over the hurdles. Just be very consistent perform well and be competitive against the athletes because everybody goes there we've all got the we've all got the qualifying no one's guaranteed to get into the final no one's guaranteed to the semis and it's just about beating people so I just think of it as right so if I beat three people in the heats that'll get me into the final like if I beat well I'm top three I'll get through and it's about that kind of element to me rather than thinking about too much about times and too much about everybody else but just just beat everyone <laughs> Finally, how proud are you to represent Great Britain again? Yeah, it's just crazy really how many I've done now and how many times I've been able to represent Britain. Um, I realised this morning that Richard Kilty was my um, team captain at the World Junior Championships as well, so I did very well there. So hopefully as he is my team captain, I'll be able to do well this time too.